First of all, guys, can we just acknowledge the mugs? I wasn't going to start with this, but this yeah. is phenomenal. I've got these, these old things. Yeah, I got. Where Nick's, do I get these? I don't. I, you mugs can, without yeah, mugs. Yeah, I've got Nick's mug in color in my on my mug. And he's got my mug. In I black need this and white. in my home immediately. This I'm, is my favorite mug. I have to have one of these. Well, this is my favorite. He's mug. classic and I'm progressive. I love it. I love it. Well, we're going, we don't need roads. So, Mr. Cage, I do want to start out with uh, how you found the voice, because mm. there's so many diff different distinct Dracula voices mm. over the course of Hollywood history. Mm. How do you pay tribute to maybe ones that we know and we love, but how do you also make it distinctly yours? Well, the words, I am Dracula, I wanted to channel a little of the Transylvanian voice, but by and large, uh, my favorite Dracula is Christopher Lee, who has a British sound. My father was the biggest influence for Dracula, who had a mid-Atlantic sound. <clears throat> what I didn't want to do was have a goofy Transylvanian sound in the role, so I thought my father, whom I channeled in a little movie I made called Vampire's Kiss, was a great starting point for the way this Dracula speaks, you know. Let me explain something to you, can There are little moments like that in the voice that the audience yeah. went nuts when you threw in those little things like that. That's all August Coppola. August Coppola is coming back, and he's coming back as Dracula. I love it. <laughs> when you play a character like Dracula, who is so ingrained in pop culture, you have right. to respect his place sure. uh, to audience members. You have to think about how other actors have portrayed him, which aspects of him you want to hold on to, maybe yeah. which ones you want to let go. Was there any similarity in how you approached in a character like Dracula versus how you were going to approach a character like Superman? <laughs> Just because both are so wildly massive um, in pop culture. It's the same with any character. You, you try to find what is organic in the uh, emotion and the mindset of the character. Start from the inside out. I, I don't approach it really any differently um, than I would uh, any other character, except to fit within a tone. And the tone of this movie is that bullseye we're trying to hit, which is comedy and horror. So. You know, I'm very much in support of Nick in this movie. This is Renfield. And so I knew I had maybe six scenes to string together. And I thought, well, let's make this more of a pop art Dracula so it has some resonance. But it wasn't, we didn't have the time to delve into the psychology of Dracula, so to speak. You know, the relationship between Renfield and Dracula is fantastic. And it's of a little bit of fear and a little bit of awe, a little bit of respect. You guys have worked with some of the greatest actors of all time. Who is the co-star that going into a film with them, you maybe feared them a little bit. You were a little scared. You were a little bit in awe of on the first day. Ooh, there's been plenty of those for me. Anne Bancroft. I, she worked uh, honeymoon in Vegas, and she played my mother. <clears throat> and I was such a, am still such an enormous fan of her. And In fact, she made her way into this performance. What she did in, in uh, The Graduate, I thought, was a, a nice model for Dracula. She's one of the models. And my father, August. What, what about you? I mean, I was intimidated working with you for the first time. <laughs> I, like, I was 14, first right. time coming to America to work on a film. <laughs> it was you, and I was like, and even the second time around, I'm yeah. like, probably because uh, as a 14-year-old, you kind of like don't fully understand everything that you had sure. achieved and done and all the iconic performances you'd given. So coming even into this one, I was like, oh, to be back well, with Nick thank you. as an adult and to have seen more of your work and like just have more of an understanding of what was going on in my life and how lucky I was, yeah. That's phenomenal. Obviously the character of Dracula is one that's been played by, by so many actors yeah. over the course of coming up on nearly 100 years. And because of that, we've gotten to see how different actors interpret him you know, whether it be, you know, comedy with the great Leslie Nielsen or Christopher Lee or Gary Oldman, whatever the case may be, who is a character that you've each played that you would love to see how another actor interprets that character in the same way that we've gotten different versions of Dracula? Uh, me. <laughs> I didn't want to play me in A Miracle Weight of Massive Talent. I wanted them to cast somebody else. I had no interest in doing that movie. I'd still be curious. They, they were talking certain names. I'd, I'd rather see somebody else play me. Who would you like to see? Uh, well, let's go with the greatest actor, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> I'd pay big money, but I don't know. He's not going to do it. Yeah, I, you were pretty good, as you, oh, I have to tell you. you. Thank you. That was a high wire act. I'd like to see Gary Oldman play uh, a character that I've played. I'd like to see his Renfield. Yeah, and I'd like to see Nick play Dracula, and I'd like to play Nick's Renfield. 
That's what we'll do. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll switch them on the next one. Right now, Universal's behind the scenes going, this sounds really good. Yeah. I want to talk about what I loved about this movie, because I loved the old, the 1931 original Dracula, and this kind of felt like you could watch the two of them, like two bookends, which was fantastic. When you're forming this character, how much do you go back to the 1931 film? How much do you go back to Bram Stoker's original novel? How do you decide what you want to pull from the classics and what do you want to make yourself? Well, obviously you go back to, to the novel a lot to figure out how Renfield began as a character and as a person. And then the, the 31 film is brilliant because Dwight Fry's performance is so so iconic. So stealing things from that when I can, I, I love his laugh, obviously, and that's such a, a piece of the character. So trying to pepper that in. Um, but then this is also 100 years later. So, I mean, that's very kind of you to say that they feel like bookends because it's then thinking you know how, how have these characters developed over that time and that's what I love with what Nick did to it you know he brings a lot of these these two characters uh, you know they're together and they but they love each other and they also are tormenting each other and there's so much hurt even in Dracula um, for what Renfield does to him trying to escape him so there's there's a lot to unpack emotionally, I think, between them. You do an amazing job. Uh, Mr. Cage, I feel like, I was thinking back in your career, this feels like the most makeup I've seen you oh, wear, yeah. particularly those early scenes. No the doubt. only other thing I could think of was um, take one goddamn guess from Face Off. That was the only other comparison <laughs> I think I could make. I'm just yeah. sort of curious, at this point in your career, finding a new tool like that, being buried under that makeup, what sort of like muscles you were able to flex with the Dracula makeup that maybe was the first time you've ever been able to do anything like that before? Well, it was just more of a reaffirmation, if you will, that so much can be conveyed with voice and, and, and just your eyes, that even though I'm under 20 pounds of makeup, the performance still can come through with voice and eyes. Uh, that, that's really what I learned from it. There was a moment where, when we first see him, I wondered if it was you, and instantly I looked at the eyes and go, oh, that's definitely him. That's well, yeah, him. and that was important. I'm, thank you for noticing that. Uh, we had a fantastic uh, makeup. Uh, artist, uh, Christian Tinsley, and he's the one that really designed the look. But we both designed together that it would still manage to get some communication through the eyes, which is why I didn't want to wear too many contacts. I wanted the eyes to still talk. I love that. You know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, different aspects from the past that you wanted to hold on to, you wanted to pay tribute to, you wanted to honor. What are aspects of Renfield and Dracula that are familiar to us, that we know, that maybe we even love, that you said as actors, I'm not bringing that over. I'm going to let that go. I think, I think for, for, for Renfield, when he's first under Dracula's control, there's a, a wildness and a craziness to, to him in the novel at times, where he's kind of losing a little bit of his senses. And I think for this story, I think he's that crazy. It's like the beginning of a love, when all your chemicals inside of your brain are, are playing up and you're not really sure what's going on. I think that chemical release has died down for him. So he's, he's more subdued than, than those roles. Uh, well, I, I, I think it was m more just really trying to find the tone. I'm, I'm trying to find this uh, bullseye between comedy and horror, which I don't think has been explored that much. It, I was often thinking about American Werewolf in London, and that's a bullseye Chris McKay and I really wanted to hit. So I, th I was always trying to be, conscious of the tone of this particular piece. It's an R-rated fantasy, but it's hilarious. And, and that's a balance that you have to find. And thankfully, Nick is someone who has tremendous wit and comic timing. So we were able to riff off of each other. I was always thinking about that. I love that. I'm going to cut you guys loose on this. They're giving me the wrap. Uh, obviously, we know just through vampire lore that there are things that, that can screw with a vampire, whether it be the crucifix or the garlic or sunlight, whatever the case may be. What are the things that can screw with an actor? In the middle of a take, what throws you off? What 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 can ruin a performance? What are what are the what are the you know the garlic and the crucifix and the sunlight equivalent of acting? Bad news. Just stay off your cell phone. Don't don't Google yourself. <laughs> don't take phone calls. Just be on set and focus. Yeah, I I, I mean yeah, just self preservation a little bit as well, right? Kind of worrying too much about yourself instead of the character. Well, guys, I you you guys continue to do absolutely phenomenal work, which makes my job easy. So seriously, I cannot thank you enough for being the legends that I always oh. knew you guys were. So seriously, thank you for taking thank the time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for letting me do both. Thanks. I appreciate it. it thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank cheers. You nice to see you again. See you guys. Thank, thank, you thank you very much. Well, we're going. We don't need roads.